Okay, right, so continuing on from our last tutorial, what we're going to do now is we're going to use this wall segment here. Um, we're going to start making like a corner segment. Okay, so. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to knock off my snaps um, for the time being, just to make this one selection first. So I'm going to just hold down shift and then just click and drag to get a duplicate of that. Okay, so ask me what I want to do. I'm just going to go with copy, that's fine. Uh, from there, I'm actually just going to zoom in a little bit and now I'm going to toggle back on um, my snaps. So I'm just going to go into settings, just make sure I've got it set on uh, vertex. I've actually just changed the pivot point of that just to this little second vertex in here, just to make it a little bit easier for us to snap. You could modify it for this tutorial. I mean, you could go with this one here if you want. So you could go to effect pivot only and you could shift it back to that one. It just just depends. That one might actually work out quite handy. So if I turn back on my snaps, move it to there. Now I'm gonna duplicate, that's the point we're gonna be using as a reference. So hold down shift, click and drag. And now it should be probably in line. Okay, so from there, we're just going to rotate it. So the shortcut for rotate is just E on the keyboard. And we can click and drag. I haven't got a, a snap turned on at the minute. But you could turn on your snap here. For your angles. Or you could just set it to 90. So we know it needs to be 90 degrees. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at now. And that looks alright. That's, um, that's what we need at the minute. Okay, so from here, what we want to do is we're going to combine these two objects together. Okay, uh, the way we do it is I'm just popping into my modify tab over here. And you should see an attach just around halfway down. Okay, I'll just click on attach and then click on the next object. And now these two objects are attached together. And that should work perfect. Okay, so for the next thing what we want to do is we want to actually weld these points together on this corner. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, you can actually delete these faces if you want and just manipulate the vertices over together. Um, you could try a bridge tool. Um, you could try an extrude tool. There's just different ways of doing it. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these faces here in the middle because I don't actually think we need them. Okay, so we'll just click. All I do is pop in the face polygon mode here. The face mode if you're on something like Maya. Uh, we're just going to click on this one here. Hit delete. Same with this one, we're going to hit delete again. And we're just going to work our way down the model. Um, just deleting these extra bits that we don't really need. Okay, and there we go. So that's how it should look now. It should look quite hollow. Uh, and obviously these other bits should be okay at the back. So what we'll do now is we're going to check some of these uh, vertices that we've got in the middle section here. And all we're checking for is we just want to see if we've got two vertices in the same space. Okay, and the way we do that is if you click and drag, you can see here it's telling me how many vertices I've selected. Okay, um, so there's actually two sitting there in exactly, more or less exactly the same 3D space. If I move that one out, you can see the difference there. And they're not, they're not really attached at the minute. Okay, so I've just undo, undone that and I've just zoomed in so we can get a good look at it. Okay. So this always prompts you with how many you've got selected. Okay, so you can see now I've got two selected. All I want to do is just scroll down, just do where the weld is. I just want to hit weld. Okay, and you know if it works, at the end it'll tell you uh, how many you've got selected then. Okay, so see once I weld it, it tells me which vertex I've got selected. So I've got vertex 12 selected, which means that there's no longer two there sitting in the same space. So if we click up here, two vertices selected. If I click on weld, now I've got vertex seven selected. So that is just one point now. It's actually stitched them together for me. Okay, so real handy way for you to check that. Um, you can just move around your, so you can see we've got vertex 12 selected there. We've got vertex three selected down there. Okay, there's also options in uh, 3ds max to check for stuff like that um, you can actually come up to the plus here at the up at the top left hand corner 
you can go to X view and we can check now for things like that okay uh, you can also get it to show your statistics as well which is basically your polygon card so later on when you're working on games development that kind of comes quite quite handy for you okay so you can look for overlapping faces you can look for multiple edges uh, overlapping vertices what we're looking for so see at the minute this is telling me on this model we've got zero overlapping vertices which is exactly what we're looking for that's what we want to get done Okay, so for our next bit, what we need to actually do is we need to merge that one and that one. Um, so straight away, I'm, I'm going to select both of these. You can see here it says I've got two selected. And I'm going to hit weld just to show you what happens. Okay, nothing's working at the minute. Uh, and what's wrong there is it's looking in a very close area um, to see where it can, it can weld these points. So if you ever find that your weld tool is not working, all you do is just pop into the options. And you can turn up or down the threshold. So basically, the weld threshold was only set to one centimeter. So it's only looking one centimeter outside. Uh, you can turn that up if you want. And see, as soon as I turn that up, what happens is it starts finding it. Okay, so that's how you adjust your your weld threshold. But you notice that that's not really going to work for us because it's tapering them in together. Okay, so we have to think of a different way of welding these. Um, one way of doing it is we might want to just move everything closer together. Okay, so if we pop into the top view, tap Z on my keyboard just to find where my model is. Okay. So what we actually want is we want these points here to be down here, those points to be in the same place, and then we want to start stitching them together. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is um, we need to actually start moving this into place for um, so we get this lined up and then we can start welding our points together. Okay, so um, you can do this in um, in any of the views. To be honest, I'm probably going to work a lot in the top view because uh, that's it's probably going to be handier for us. But you can do this in perspective as well. Um, so one of the tools I just want to show you is just a um, slight modification of what we've been doing so far. Um, it's just a tiny modification on the snap tool. Okay, so um, let's just get a decent view of what we're looking at here. Okay, so I'll do it for this top corner just to make it nice and easy to see. Um, so what we, we want to move this point here. Uh, we want to move it just in this axis. And we basically want to snap it to another point. Okay. Um, so if we come into our options here, you can see at the minute I've turned on um, Vertex as our snap. I'm just going to flick into our options. Okay. And all I want to do is I want to turn on Enable Axis Constraints. Okay. Without that turned on, uh, we're just going to be able to remove that point. That's not really going to make that much of a difference. Okay. So I'm just going to, so all I did was right click, just pop in here. And, and what we're going to do now is just pop out of this view. We're going to go into the top view and have a look at it. So you can push T on your keyboard if you want. So now all I'm doing is I'm just moving this point. And you notice now I've got this little rubber rubber band, it's called, this little green kind of line. And it's going to move it towards that point there. So what it's doing is it's snapping the point. But it's only snapping it in the axis that I'm moving it. So I'm moving in the Y axis. And it's forcing it to snap into the same position as that point there. Okay. I'll try the same with this one. You see what's happened there. So all I do is when I'm moving here, I'm not clicking in the middle. I'm only clicking on one axis at a time and I'm moving it out. Okay, so we pop into perspective view. We'll see what that did. So basically just move those two points into exactly the same space in 3D. Okay, it's a lot more accurate than doing it another way. So what I want to do then is just click and drag to select both of them. If I just double check here, I've got two vertices selected. Same as we did before, we want to hit weld. And then I'm left with vertex 20. We're just going to do the same thing for the rest of the for the rest of the points. Okay. You notice here as well I've got uh, a little two on there. I just changed 
the um, it and the 2D toggle instead of 3D toggle. Okay, so see the same things working here. I've just changed that back to three just to be safe. I'm just moving that point the 3D space, but I'm moving my mouse. As soon as I start making the change, I'm moving my mouse towards basically the point I want it to snap on. Okay. I just made a slight mistake on that one. So we click there. Make sure you get the right axis because I didn't there now. I'm just dragging it in 3D space. Okay, whenever you're happy, you can click and drag the box over them. See how many you've got selected. I've got two selected. Just want to weld it. It's going to start making some funny changes. Because um, what's happening is, as we stitch this together, uh, 3D Studio Max is recalculating the lights. Okay, so all I'm doing is just click and drag again. Just using my snap points. Click and drag again. There we go. And it, it's up to you what way you want to do. You might want to move them all into place first and then go through and weld them one at a time. <clears throat> or you just might want to do it one piece at a time. It's just whatever whatever makes sense for you. Um, different people work on different methods. So I'm doing the same thing. We should be getting nice and used to how this operates. So there, I've got two selected. That's fine. I'm just going to weld them together. And then make sure I move this in the right axis. Same again for this one. Select those two vertices. Yep. Okay. You see, as I did that last one, this here just came up at the bottom saying no overlapping vertices. Okay. So there, what we've done there is just taken one wall asset. We duplicated it. We actually combine the two of them together and then using the weld tool with a mixture of the snap tool, we managed to, to piece together like a nice corner segment. Now you could, it just depends on what you need. This here could really be reduced down if we needed to. Um, I'm just gonna turn off my snap there a second. Like we could really, really reduce this into really quite a small corner. Uh, and that might be something that comes later on in the production of this environment. You might have a small going into long a nice small one would probably work work perfect because we can always attach it to any one of these. Okay, uh, but for now, I mean that I think that looks spot on. Uh, what we want to do is just overall as an object, we want to just have a look at the pivot point. You can see the pivots sitting over there in the middle. That's that's really no good to us. We want to shift it. Um, we want to shift it over to here. Okay, so I'm just not back on my snap. I've got vertex on anyway. So now we can see that snapped into the right point. If I knock that off, then we should be able to just snap it back into all other wall segments. Okay, there you go. Oh, I snapped it a little bit too far. It looks alright. Okay, so that's the second part done. Uh, we've made one wall segment. Now we did quite a lot of work there to get one corner wall segment, but the main thing is that's all one solid mesh. It's empty on the inside, which means we're not going to get any errors about double faces, and it's all kind of snapped in together quite neatly. So in one of the next tutorials now, we're going to look at maybe making an inverse of that, and possibly adding a window and a wall into this wall segment.